The crackdown on Russian gold continues, and this is how they are going to do it. Let's explore! When I first read the story, I thought to myself, this seems like so long overdue. I'm actually shocked that they haven't done this as one of the first acts upon the sanctions on Russian gold. But you have to keep in mind that Russia is the second largest producer of gold. And there's a lot of Russian gold out there, especially in the form of these big bars that are being produced. You may have seen photos of them. But nonetheless, we know that gold comes in various different forms, but mainly in the form of coins and bars. There's actually some central banks that do hold coins as well. But bars are the mainstay. That's what we all think about when we think of gold and the good delivery bars. And typically they are 400 ounce bars, 27 pounds of gold. I've actually seen some of those from the United States Mint and they are remarkable. It's pretty amazing. Uh, but nonetheless, this is an accounting. That's right. After all of this time, it is now time for an accounting of Russian gold bars. And uh, this is what the London Bullion Market Association is going to be doing, according to a story here from UKDaily.News. Banks in the LBMA are reluctant to say how much Russian gold is stored in vaults, but disclosures from gold-owning mutual funds show hundreds of tons were piling up in London, Zurich, and New York before Russia invaded Ukraine in February. Figures from 11 funds show that about 7% of all the gold they hold, currently about 160 tons worth about $9 billion, comes directly from Russia. The LBMA will make its data available to customs authorities and market participants, but not the public. So we won't be able to see this. Now that obviously brings to light uh, conspiracies, thoughts of conspiracy, and the fact that they're not making this transparent. I can see arguments for both sides of, of that equation, but nonetheless, uh, very interesting indeed. Um, so they won't be available to the public, and this will help them verify whether Russian gold bars transported between countries were owned or owned outside of Russia before sanctions were imposed. It said it had preliminary a preliminary database operational, but was working to improve access and make maintenance easier. So I guess they're tightening it up or what have you, but the fact that, that this has not really been done at the outset is kind of remarkable in my eyes. The United States and other Western countries imposed sanctions, as many of us know, on many Russian companies and banks and their central bank after the Kremlin sent troops into Ukraine. London is the world's largest trading center for bullion, and Russia is one of the largest gold producers. In fact, they're the second. The LBMA blocked new Russian gold bars from the market, but bars made before the Ukraine war can still be traded. The concern is that Russian companies with pre-war bars may try to sell them, and I guess this is why this is the crackdown, and they're going to be trying to, to get these into the system. It made sense for clearing banks in London to send lists of the bars that were there before the sanctions went into effect to the LBMA, according to Ruth Crowell, who told Reuters. Crowell also said this was so that a customs officer or whoever can ask for confirmation where certificates were given and that these bars were outside London before the sanctions came into effect. And keep in mind that these bars have numbers as it's tied to them, serial numbers, at least the one that I've seen, there's a couple of different numbers there. But most of these larger bars, in fact, even many one ounce bars and assays have some sort of serial number tied to them. So they can be tracked by that and say, well, hey, if it's within the serial number range, they're good to go or not. So it's, it's interesting and fascinating to see where that is but, um, and how they will track that. Uh, the, debate, the database is designed to ensure that we can more easily demonstrate compliance with sanctions as metal moves around the world. Now, that is for those official uh, transactions because they have to be in those forms. 
but many of us know that, well, they can just take those bars and melt them down and sell them in the black market or sell them in the overall market. Uh, a 400 gold, pound gold bar can go a long way and it can be relatively easy, chopped up, melted down. So that's what they would do, is my uh, guess. There's ways to circumvent this system for sure. Four banks, JP Morgan, HSBC, ICBC, Standard, and UBS, operate vaults in London and Zurich and report information to the LBMA. So if any of the gold is going to be transacted through any of those agencies, it will be reported. But you guys, you know, gold is very liquid, and more than likely they will find other ways to uh, get that gold transacted if it doesn't meet their criteria. They may, they may have to go through a few more hoops, but hoops they will go through nonetheless. It's a minor inconvenience when all is said and done in order to get the uh, get what they want out of that gold. It's very interesting. So uh, Crowell declined to say how much Russian gold they owned. Uh, she said that the extra scrutiny discourages people from trading Russian metal and other gold bars with Russian-looking acrylic script, such as those in Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan, which also face scrutiny and delays. They don't say whether they face sanctions, like other friendly nations, former satellites that have friendly ties or maybe um, corrupted ties with the uh, Russian regime led by Putin. Very interesting. There it is. So what an amazing thing here, this crackdown that has started here with the, with the LBMA further trying to fine tune because they know there's only so much they can do, only so much they can do to prevent the trade of gold because gold is very liquid. And as you'd see here, um, with the various different forms of gold that are out there, they come in various different security measures nowadays, more so than ever before. It's probably just a matter of time as we march on through to, uh, through history, where well, we're gonna see some of these big gold bars have special security features, much like what we see on this Gold Britannia, dated 2023, uh, with uh, lenticular devices, such as we see here, uh, with the little padlock, when you turn it this way, and when you turn it that way, you can see, indeed, the trident. So that's the kind of thing that we may see happen more and more that's very difficult to um, to reproduce. And so therefore, when you think about it, it's only a matter of time that with technology that we'll be able to further enforce these types of things. But again, that's just among the official uh, central banks and these exchanges like the LBMA being the largest. And so when you think about that, you know, they may be less and less important as they tighten up with these types of security measures, such as providing databases and tracking of bars and things through the system. And again, I'm not against that, but it just goes to show you that gold is gold. And there's going to be somebody out there who's going to want to take it, uh, no matter if it comes in just the raw poured form like this with or without any markings on it or other coins from other nations around the world or bars or even rounds. They will be distributed. They will be transacted for goods and services. But the convenience of just having the right stamped bar, there's something to be said for that as well, depending on what the purpose of the exchange is. But uh, very interesting. Now, I don't know what Russia, uh, how they'll react to this or, or where their gold bars are being traded now. Many feel that a lot of that gold is being uh, traded directly with China, and that's where they got a lot of their uh, buying is from Russia, being the second largest producer. I mean, it only makes sense that Russia and China are working together and cooperating in that aspect, and probably in exchange for Russia being or China being silent uh, about uh, its support or for or against the invasion of Ukraine, and probably they made a deal that okay. If you will take our gold, then we won't pressure you to support us in that regard. And uh, and so therefore, it can be very lucrative for both sides in that case. So there you have it. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section below about this story. Pretty fascinating indeed. If the crackdown continues on Russian gold. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to all of you for taking the time to watch this video. 
And I want to encourage you to please rate. That means press that thumbs up button down below. Share this video with others. Comment. And subscribe.